Hey guys, welcome to the first Love 2D 2D platformer video. Today we're going to be talking about Object Oriented Programming, which has the short form acronym of OOP. Now, probably a lot of you are already familiar with Object Oriented Programming as it's very widely used in many programming languages. Uh, but for those of you who don't, I do want to talk about it today because it's not mandatory in Lua and that is the language of Love 2D and we're going to be using it because I think it's really important especially in game development. Now there are pros and cons to object oriented programming. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about what those are because we're just going to be using it. Uh, but if you are interested in this topic I really do recommend that you either look into a language that supports object oriented programming or you just read up on it more and especially in terms of the pros and cons in terms of what you want to do. Uh, so object-oriented programming in short is basically a design method that allows you to write reusable code and structure programs like a human would. And I know that sounds like a pretty broad concept, and that's really because it is. I mean, there are entire languages based around object-oriented programming. And kind of the, the root of object-oriented programming, at least in my opinion, stems from the concept of a class. And you probably heard this word before, uh, if, and it might be very confusing to you, especially if you don't know what object-oriented programming is. And a class is, is kind of like a blueprint. It's a blueprint for an object. For an object. And what I mean by that is, if you think about it from the concept of, hmm, let's think, let's say a house. Right, we have a house here. Right, we're all pretty familiar with what a house is. A house is a very uh, large and encompassing word, right? There are many different types of houses. There are big houses, there are small houses, there are houses made of wood, there are houses made of bricks. But in the end, they're all houses and they usually have things like rooms in them, different floor heights, they have, you know, entrances and exits and all sorts of things. There are many different uh, properties or attributes attributes of this house and we commonly and I kind of already give you a hint about it in programming at least refer to, refer to these attributes as properties right so I can walk by a house that I see on the street and I can say that's a red house because that houses property uh, in terms of color is red and in the same sense houses uh, have actual uh, behavior to them now this is probably a better example to actually use on something that isn't a static kind of unmoving object but if you think about it houses also do have uh, these more or less behaviors so think for example that I have a house in uh, sandstorm country I don't know I don't live in a country with a lot of sand but let's say that you're in a country where sandstorms are a problem and if you do not board up the windows in your house I guess I should be drawing the windows on this house if you don't board up the windows on your house then it's gonna do some damage so in that sense you can say that a house at least in sandstorm country assuming we're defining a class of house that is being built in the sandstorm country has the behavior behavior of boarding up its windows and I suppose there's no apostrophe there and we commonly refer to this and I might run out of room there commonly refer to these, in programming at least, as methods. And so all a method means is it's a function. You, you are probably and hopefully familiar with the concept of function, uh, assuming you have not used object-oriented programming before, but you are programming in some sense. A method is simply a function that is specific to the actual class itself. So it's specific in this case to a house and it's specific to the attributes and properties of a house. So if you think about it, uh, I can look at a house and I say, okay, this house has four windows, which is a property, right? 
that's a property of the house. And so when I have a method, I can say, okay, method, and this is a generalization for all houses. So I'm not writing a method specifically for a house with four windows, but I'm writing a, a method or a function that says, okay, I know I'm working with a house, a house, and I know houses have from zero to technically infinity windows, just because I can define those things. And I know houses don't actually have infinity windows, but I can technically put any number to that property that I want to when defining it. So I can say, okay, we're going to look through every house in terms, or look through every window or look at every window. Window and board it up. Right? And that's what my method is. It's a function that is specific to the house. And I can update these properties. So I don't necessarily have to work with such a, a static object like a house. I can say, maybe I have a character, right? Maybe it's my character. And I'm saying, okay, character. It has the property of, you know, uh, properties. Let's define some. That's not... I'm tr struggling with my spelling today. Properties. Oh man, I am. <laughs> Properties. Sorry. Uh, we have height. You know, we have health. Uh, hunger, maybe. A whole bunch of H's. Uh, gender. All sorts of things, right? These are all properties of a character, a character class, right? It's a generalization, so maybe I'm making an MMO. Everyone gets to create a character. Everyone's character has properties such as height, health, hunger, and gender. So in the class, we don't necessarily know what the height is or what the health is or what the hunger is or what the gender is, but we know that in this class, in this class, that these properties do exist. So the difference between, and sorry, I guess I can write an example method to a method would be like lose health. Right, and that would be to uh, take away some of the health, or gain health, or uh, eat, or you know, jump, right? Uh, the or attack, whatever, right? Just a whole bunch of things that an actual character can do. And once again, it's not talking about a specific character; it's talking about this broad generalization of what a character is. And so, the difference between a class and what we're now going to talk about here, uh, called an object. An object is an object. Object is actually something uh, that kind of is more or less inherited from a class. So an object is created by a class. So we take a blueprint, right? We take, for example, our character and we plug in those values. We plug in. So we say character and we plug in, uh, like a, we could, for example, call it like a function height, health, you know, etc. Right? We plug in all those values, and what we get is we get an object. So an object is basically a class with all these things filled in. And on an object, we can actually run a method. Right? So we can say the method will run. For example, we'll think about the lose, lose health one. Right? So we're looking at the character. It has these properties. It has these attributes. So the method, we run the method on this object, and it says, oh, okay, this is a specific object. It has a specific health property, so we're going to take that health property and we're going to subtract I don't know some amount we'll say five from it and update that to be the new health so the new health kind of becomes this so health uh, equals health minus five right and that updates the property of the of this character object so we can use that to kind of structure and think about programs uh, as I said in an object oriented way so to put that in perspective, if we want to think about problems, let's think about a game of basketball, right? We have a game of basketball. We know that we score points by putting a ball through a net. So we could define an object for the ball or a class for the ball and obviously define an object actually for the ball. And we could define a class for the players on the court, right? And that would be one class, but we would, you know, create multiple players that actually go on the, on the court. Uh, so I guess we'll write players with an S and, uh, I forgot to write ball. 
And we could define the net. You know, we know that when the ball goes through the net, we score points. And we could define maybe like uh, lines, boundaries, like the actual court itself maybe is a better word. And we know that when the players step out of the court and the ball is in play type of thing, things, you know, that's a foul, stuff like that. So, you know, we take all these things into consideration. We can start to think about this from the actual perspective of, of an object as a human. Because, right, we know there are rules. We say, okay, here's the ball. The ball can get past the player such and such. And the, the ball then gets past the player such and such. And that player shoots the ball into the net. And... Uh, that player actually accidentally stepped out of bounds of the court, so that shot wasn't actually fair, and so forth, right? Uh, so we can actually start to take these programming problems, like creating a game of basketball, and actually transition it into human speak, even though we're still uh, actually programming. Now, it's not exactly like we're speaking English or Spanish or French or whatever, but it's definitely a lot more verbal than a procedural language where we're not thinking in terms of objects, we're just thinking in terms of like raw data and something going through a very specific procedure. Uh, so let's go into an example, and we're not even going to be in Love 2D, or maybe we will, I don't know, I'll use either the Lua compiler uh, by itself, or not compiler, sorry, Lua interpreter uh, by itself, or the uh, Love 2D uh, debug console. I don't know, we'll see, I haven't recorded that part yet, but I will see you guys there. So. See ya. Okay, so we're into the code now. We have three classes here. We have a goblin, a player, and a shop class. So the player, uh, it is constructed here, so we define the actual initial player. It has a type that is shared throughout all players. It's just a property or an attribute, whatever you'd like to call it, uh, that's a part of the class uh, that we can access uh, to tell basically what type of object that is created by this class. So later in other classes like the goblin and the shop we may want to check uh, that we're actually interacting with the player object so we'll be able to do so by indexing this uh, underscore underscore type property. So then in the player.new we are actually creating a whole bunch of things so we're defining things like the name, health, attack, defense, magic, and how much gold the player has and so forth. Uh, we're then defining some methods here like uh, taking damage and so this uh, for example is a of course, as a humanoid or really any living thing, you can take uh, physical like health damage. And uh, we're just making sure that our health never goes below zero, and we're just printing it out uh, to kind of let us know in terms of the console that we've been attacked. We're also uh, providing a method to actually do the attacking. In this case, because we're very limited, and this is a very short example, we're limiting our player to only being able to attack goblins. Uh, so we just basically provide a style, the opponent, which as I said has to be a goblin. Uh, we make sure that of course the player isn't dead so that they actually can attack. Uh, and we make sure that the opponent isn't dead. Uh, and then we make sure that we actually can use this style of attack, which we'll actually look at. Uh, or did I delete it? No, I didn't. So we'll look at what happens if we don't do that one. Um, and of course, if we manage to actually kill the thing, so we'll take damage on the opponent, which has a similar method for the goblin, take damage, um, we will give the player that uh, opponent, which as I said is a goblin, uh, their gold. So we'll just do that. Uh, then the get stats, that just allows us to basically print things like the player's name, health, and their attack damage and so forth. Uh, so that's the player class. So the goblin class, very similar, has an attack and a take damage and a get stats thing. Uh, goblins don't have magic and they don't really have uh, inventories other than gold. So that's really just a player thing. Uh, but we can give them names and so forth. Uh, the shop class, uh, it's very simple. It has a name for the shop. It has the amount of gold that the shop has. If you were to obviously expand this shop system, you could maybe have bartering and what have you. And it has an inventory of its wares. So all we have really is one method that allows uh, the shop to sell items to a player. So a player, it has to be a player that is inputted into the player input here. We make sure that the shop actually carries the item, like has not only the actual item in stash, but also it has it in inventory. Um, we have to make sure that the player has enough gold. Uh, if so, we actually complete the transaction. So we switch the gold hands. We switch the object's hands to different, you know, the player and the uh, shopkeep. 
and we provide any errors that that gives us. So what are the advantages to this? We can write basically a little scenario here with all these methods. So we can define the classes here, right? So we're just defining the creation classes here. Uh, then I'm defining a player. We're just going to call it ego. We're going to define a potion shop. It's a shop that sells potions. So uh, let's see what happens. And we're going to find two goblins, and they all have their stats and what have you. So we uh, we'll go to the potion shop. We try to buy a potion, and that's going to basically tell us, no, we can't because we have zero gold. Uh, then we're going to print out our stats here because we're going to go goblin hunting to try and get more gold. Uh, so we can fight the goblin. We're going to go through the fighting. We kill both of them. We're just doing all that here. Uh, then we're going to check to make sure basically what our, you know, our attack is and health and all that stuff and what our current amount of gold is. Like, did we kill enough goblins? Then we're going to go to the potion shop and the potion shop only actually carries one potion and it costs five gold. So we go to the potion shop and we buy one potion. We try and buy another one, but because they only have one, we'll see what happens there. And then we're just going to update our stats. So I've, of course, already run this stuff, so I know it's going to run well, but let's look through it again. So once again, uh, we didn't have enough to buy the potion. So we're looking at the stats of myself and the goblins. Uh, we have our fight over here. Uh, then we're looking at my stats again. So we've got 96 health after that fight and 15 gold so we buy something but then it tells us that the shop doesn't carry that item so then we look at our gold here and it tells us uh, we spent the five gold and we own one potion so we could maybe do maybe a little more verbal with this stuff uh, we're obviously not making a text adventure but i'm just here to show you that we can do a lot of stuff like we defined those methods really for one goblin one player and one shop but we can really run a lot of different scenarios here and be pretty verbal about it in terms of how, how we describe it. Like we're, we're describing this like a normal uh, human might and it makes sense pretty pretty uh, good for in terms of code logic. So I'm just going to add this back in here which is uh, me attempting to attack the goblin with a sniper rifle which clearly doesn't exist and that's just going to show you some error handling. Uh, and sorry, the Love 2D kind of likes to crash a bit when I uh, record. Uh, so... Right, we get a sniper rifle is not a valid way of attacking for player, and we could do vice versa for the actual goblin. So if we try to attack the player uh, with a sniper rifle, we will also get a similar error. Sniper rifle is not a valid way of attacking for goblin. So that's pretty much it. Um, this is just an example of object-oriented programming. Um, so I will, of course, post this example in the description. We'll probably have a GitHub repo for all the stuff in this series, uh, so that will be linked below. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, as always, hope you guys learned something new.